Now let's take a look at actually calling Web API for data. The first thing that I want to mention though is that there's something we're going to run into very quickly when we do this and we need to be aware of this. It's called the same origin policy. This is something that is built into web browsers and built into web servers and it's long standing. What it basically says is when you try to access something that's external, something that's not hosted on your own domain or on your own server, you could be injecting or opening up your code for hacks and malicious attacks. So let's take a look at some examples here. If I was at bensolens.com and I was trying to access bensolens.com slash data, this would work. It's the same domain, it's just a different page. Similarly, if I was trying to get at bensolens.com slash data, page two, totally works. If I'm trying to pass in a username and password to bensolens.com slash data, still works same domain everything's good now what if I was trying to hit bensolens.com on port 81 no it's a different port if I was trying to hit HTTPS versus HTTP it's a different protocol and lastly if I was trying to get data from a completely different site the obvious answer is no now this is what the same origin policy dictates and like I said there it's a configuration setting in your browser and on the web servers themselves. So it's possible to get around this by changing the config or in the newer ways of transferring data on the web there's other protocols that don't get blocked by this because they have a bit of a more complex way of handling the security. Now, I'm not going to dive deep into how web security works here I just wanted to introduce this as something that you need to be aware of because you're probably going to hit it very very soon as you start to develop here. Now in this example I'm going to use, we're actually going to go get data from GitHub, but GitHub has an actual API, and most things that you see labeled API usually have the built-in protocols necessary to work around the same origin policy. So we shouldn't hit that error, and we shouldn't have to worry about this now. But just know, as you get into this, there's a lot of other things to consider besides just the code that it takes to actually make something happen. So let's dive in, let's go back to our Cloud9 environment and start coding. Here I am back in the Cloud9 environment and what I'm going to do basically is try to rebuild this exact same chart that we had or these two charts that were being generated by this monthly sales by category multiple JSON file. And instead of using it here I want to pull it directly from GitHub. So let me switch over and show you GitHub's API. Here under developer.github.com slash v3 or if you just search for it, you'll get this page. It has all this documentation on how to use GitHub to actually make requests and actually do things. And just like I said before, it's basically hitting a URL and parsing the response. Now, fortunately, we're looking for one called Git Data, and we're going to pull back what is considered a blob. And a blob is essentially, it used to stand for binary large object. Essentially, now what it is is a bit of data that you want to retrieve. And you can see the example here, get, which is a type of request, if you remember from our last module when we talked about the different types, a repo, which is a repository on GitHub, the owner, the repo name, git blobs, and then the SHA, which is a hashed value that represents essentially the name of it. So what we can do is, I've actually uploaded this already. So let me show you the repository and you can follow this along and I'll leave this up here for you to use and you can try it with your own GitHub repository. So if I go to github.com and I log in, you can see my account there. I can actually go down to my repositories and I have one here called D3JS Resources. And in here I have a couple different things. I have an image, I have the CSV that we used, and I have this JSON file which is the one we're actually going to use for this module here. And if you can Remember, it's actually the exact same thing that we had in the other one. It's that contents with the categories of furniture and technology and then the monthly sales embedded in there. So what I want to do is I want to actually pull this data live from the web, which means that if this data were to change, it would actually change my chart as well. So in order to do that, I need to issue that API command. And so what I'll type in here, I'm going to go to the beginning of this URL, I'm going to leave the HTTPS, I'm going to add api.github.com, this time it's going to be repos, slash bsolens, slash name, 
slash contents and then the path to the file essentially. So this is another way to get the data back and when I hit this you'll see some JSON that pops up. Now remember just like we had before we have kind of the header information name path that hashed value different URLs and then we have the content now the content here is essentially that file. This is the file that we're looking at and this is the data we want. You can see the slash n for new line characters and all those embedded in there. And then you see just what looks like a bunch of gibberish, a bunch of mixed up hexadecimal characters. And then I get a clue here that at the bottom that there's actually something that is encoding this. So what I need to do is decode this data before I'm able to use it in my visualization. So let's take a look at how to decode some data now.